So the next conversation is uh, with a very versatile Dr. Mohan Agashe. Uh, the conversation is on mental health through the lens of Indian cinema. Uh, to lead this conversation, may uh, invite Ms. Subra Predrashni, who is an award-winning science journalist and currently the editor of Nature India. She's been a correspondent with major Indian dailies like the Times of India, the Indian Express, the Asian Age, the Telegraph, and the news agency Press Trust of India. And she's been an inspiration to many interested in careers in science communication. Over to you, Shubra. Thank you, Madan. Uh, please welcome Dr. Mohan Agashe. <laughs> Dr. Agashe uh, Thespian, Padma Shri. Dr. Agashe is a film actor, a trained psychiatrist, uh, and now a roving educator, if you will, on many issues, including mental health. Um, he's been instrumental in setting up the Maharashtra Institute of Mental Health in Pune. He has an enviable list of students uh, across the world with flourishing careers uh, as psychiatrists. Uh, he's been an advisor to the Maharashtra government on mental health education and service. And of course, we all know uh, about his glorious stint as the director general uh, of the film and Television Institute of India in Pune in not so newsier times, 1997. Was it as newsy as is it, it is today? FTII? Mm. It was still in news when you were around? Yeah, it was. It was, okay. It's okay. always in news. <laughs> always in news. Okay. Um, so let me begin by thanking you for having this conversation with me, first of all. And uh, like we, we sort of had a, a pre-conversation before this, and we were talking about uh, the connect between our trades and professions and how one thing has led to the other for both of us, uh, and uh, how we have chosen careers that were finally our calling. They di we didn't begin with careers that uh, we laid out for ourselves by way of training. So, yeah, so that's one thing I'd pick you on as we start conversing more. And uh, the food for thought by way of his recent works, uh, one of them is the great uh, theater um, production, which is called uh, the um, Zara Samjun Gya. Uh, did I pronounce that right? It's a Marathi, it's a Marathi play, uh, which is about the quintessential dilemmas of doctors practicing modern medicine in a challenging medico-legal environment in India that uh, is right now. So, uh, and, and of course, the other national award-winning Kasav about depression uh, and Astu that deals with aging and dementia. Of course, we've seen him in so many films and have appreciated her work in more than 75 films, is that right? Well, I didn't count. Uh, you didn't count. <laughs> OK, that's what uh, your profile says. Um, so I think i Anyway, we I'll decided to introduce in different way. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of talk going on, and a lot yeah. of PPTs and everything. So my introduction is going to be audiovisual. Yes. Right? So let's just and have but a what brings us together is both of us are sort of outcast, you know from our respective professions. Uh, I'm not into popular cinema, and the films I have supported uh, find it difficult to distribute and get the viewers. Uh, so I really have to go from, not from house to house, but from group to group to show the film and talk about it. And she also sort of paved the way through popular journalism to nature. After having worked in print media, and I'm of course scared of her <laughs> because uh, I can't write. I'm sort of dyslexic, which I could not announce till recently uh, because in our times, dyslexia was not respected. Now it is honor to be dyslexic. You know, so. So now it has some status symbol, so, okay. So one of the reasons I sat in the library is not to read, but closely observe and understand 
who understands by reading. And then later not make friends with him, but initiate dialogue, provoke him, so that he vomits whatever he has read. <laughs> that was my method of studying. You know, that's your right. And so I will go, since I brought a clip. Please welcome the well-known actor, thinker, psychiatrist. We get all kinds of people, but basically severely disturbed patients like schizophrenia, manic depressive psychosis. And Padmasri, Mohan Agashi. Namaskar. Let's see. That last one was crazy. Well, what was that? <laughs> you were dancing. Uh, oh, that was my... The, I did one mainstream cinema called Trimurti. <coughs> and I'm very happy that that was the first major flop of Subhash Gai. So that was my way of proving how villains are stronger than heroes. There were three heroes, Shah Rukh Khan, Jake Ishroff, and Anil Kapoor, but the villain was very strong. So the film flopped. All right, All right. So, uh, so I think we'll begin by opening the conversation about Indian cinema and um, the portrayal of, uh, among other things, mental health issues in cinema. Um, uh, what, do you, what do you think about how we portray? Do we scrape the surface? Do we go <coughs> in? What exactly is happening in Indian cinema? So Apart I'm from the Shah Rukh Khan starrer that we saw <coughs> about, yeah. uh, uh, it was, he, he was playing a psychiatrist. What was the name of the movie? I forget. What was that? Is Zindagi. Dear Zindagi. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, okay. I've seen that, yeah. Okay. See, one of the major problems that worried me, I close to projecting mental health in cinemas is <coughs> of late, uh, especially after the revolution of digital media, I realized one thing and which is very important for us to notice. See, the print media, your media, preceded digital media by 300 years. Right? And so, it percolated deep into education system. And so reading and writing became mandatory for all of us. Whatever we do in life, whether you are researcher, non-researcher, practitioner, whatever it is. <coughs> and we study it for 15 years at least, from before going to school till the end of college. We read and write. So entire focus of formal education has been the left hemisphere of brain. Thinking, logic, reasoning, and everything. So it has taught us to think and analyze. But unfortunately, it hasn't taught us to observe, understand, and accept, which is very important in mental health. And with digital media now, Everybody is using image and sound without learning anything about it. As you know, this small instrument, there's more abuse and overuse than use. These days we don't even see with our own eyes anything. If you see and everybody comes and says, may I take your photo or selfie, which is that. So I thought it was very important to project mental health through image and sound because it really connects much better than a lecture. It's a very strong medium and the filmmaker I worked with was a social scientist and she turned to filmmaking because she was doing research on women of urban slum 
and their identity problems. Graduate of Tata Institute. And at the end of it, she ran into problem because none of these women could read or write. But all of these women saw films. And so she thought, why not make a film? Because that is more influential. And her experience of first film and the animated debate it generated made her become a filmmaker and learn this new language of image and sound. And to prove my point, I'm going to show you only one minute film. Why? Because the point it makes in one, I mean less than one minute, this film is from the Ability Foundation's competition of 60 seconds to fame. And the subject was inclusive society. So you had to make a statement within 60 seconds to convey, communicate your message effectively. So I'm going to show you that film, 1663, to make my point, because my time is very short. I would have loved to show you a film, such a beautiful auditorium. A regular Habitat Film Festival happens here, and you can see quality films, but we can see one minute film. Can we have the lights? ஐயோ சேஞ்ச் இல்லையே சார் அத அந்த கடையில வாங்கிட்டு வா I think a lecture on disability doesn't convey as effectively as this film does about attitudes. And films are very important for attitudes. One thing for effective learning, you need two things, interest and ability. Interest and intellect. So their interest is like an ovum and intellectual programming are like sperms. And learning is the child of interest and intellect. The function of good literature, good film, good theater is to bring the ovum of interest into ovulation phase so that the child of learning is born. And once it is born, you don't have to do anything because it grows on its own. And this Proof also I have why I use films. The idea of making film is to motivate, generate interest. Interest is in the domain of emotion, which is in the domain of subconscious and unconscious. And intellect is in the domain of cognitive brain. So to meet them together, if you may be very intelligent, but if you are not interested, no learning is going to take place. But if you are tremendously interested, even if you are intellectually challenged, you are still going to learn something. And so that is the reason why I resorted to film, besides my own personal reasons of being intellectually challenged. You know. But then I found that is the way of effective learning. And in both these films, which I did with Sumitra Bhave, it brings it highlights the point that how empathy is essential in management of a case and not only intellect. Because scientists really contribute a lot. But if it doesn't come together, if IQ and EQ don't function together, there could be problems. 
in the end, I will show you one clip of scientific advances, technological advances. But before that, I must ask you, how did you give up your media and what is happening in your media? What is happening in medicine, I'm really worried. That's the reason I'm doing this play written also by a doctor. Because the doctor-patient relationship, which once was based on care, compassion, and trust, gradually has become prosecutor-defendant through buyer-seller. So what has caused this? And how the profession has been hijacked by corporates, insurance companies, government, pharmas, and not only medical profession. I'm worried because this has happened in field of education and also entertainment. None of these professions today are dominated by professionals. They're dominated by business people. They dictate how the profession should work. That is my major concern in doing this play. And I think it's very serious the way it happens, particularly in India today, because in India, unlike West, there is actually physical violence. The destruction of the hospital material, beating of doctors, and the understanding between the two, humanity in medicine, is as important. All technological innovations cannot substitute humanity in medicine. Otherwise, that's uh, easy. So something like that must have brought you because your media. Because once upon a time, we had very clear conditioning that news is real and film is fiction. Now it's exactly opposite. <laughs> news is far more fictional and so we, entertaining we, we had a pact than art cinema. This, right? We had a pact before coming to the stage. We won't say bad things about each other. But yeah, I, I totally agree to what you're saying. And uh, things like, uh, you know, what drove you from psychiatry into coming to theater and acting is very similar to what drove me from mainstream journalism into science journalism. Um, because uh, commerce obviously governs a lot of things in the media uh, landscape today. Uh, not just commerce, there's political interests, there's commercial interests, there's uh, what have you. You have so many other things that govern how a news would end up being in a newspaper or broadcast, broadcast house. So uh, for me, um, the choice for giving up political and film and sports journalism uh, was uh, primarily driven by, by the fact that science journalism uh, was way more impactful. The connect with society is greater, I thought. And I'm uh, in the last two decades of doing science journalism, I, f I found that not very far from the truth. Because every other day, you have a story that can make an impact. And it's almost always a positive story. It's almost always a positive narrative. Something that you unraveling, something interesting that you're bringing out from the labs to the masses. And so, uh, so for me, uh, I think it's, it's very much the same reasons uh, for, for creating that space for something that is untold or uncharted in, in popular um, uh, imagination and popular narrative. Um, I think the, the story is... See, see <coughs> sensitivity and sensationalism is the major problem. See, unfortunately, formal education does not, these days, provoke sensitivity, you know, promotes intelligence. And the media, general media, provokes sensationalism. The idea of making this film is to give authentic information, but through a story. The major problem of mainstream cinema is, as I told you, print media came 300, film came 100 years ago, and it came primarily for entertainment. So many of us, in fact, very intelligent and educated people, many times tell me, oh, when I go to film, I leave my brain home. 
मैं दिमाग घर पे छोड़ के जाता हूँ फिल्म देखने को सो द एटीट्यूड इज वी गो टू फिल्म एज एन इमोशनल लेग्जेटिव विच इट इज नॉट इट इज नॉट बिकॉज थ्रू एनी फिल्म लाइक एनी इवेंट इन लाइफ you are given passive information through film and the effect of passive informations can be far more negative than passive smoking because they give rise to stigma and one of our main issues is how to fight stigma and the genesis of stigma is because in order to make film entertaining they compromise the authenticity of information and so the way mental health or professionals are depicted in any film not only doctors or psychiatrists even the police the politicians generally the way they are projected are more of caricatures than real people and that is comp compromised it's almost like your mother offering you yesterday's food and because you should eat it without complaint putting a lot of masala into it and make it a nice tasty food so mainstream cinema is almost like a junk food and if you eat junk food well you are left with no choice but eventually go to a doctor and go on a diet so these days i've changed my profession from a doctor i become a nutritionist i prescribe cinematic diet to improve your mental health right and like you go to any this has to be done or depending on the program i am in a scientific community so i say the intellectual software works on motivational platform and i'm for health sector i do surgery of education and anesthesia of entertainment so you can choose whatever way you like it scientist of late medical scientists those who want to extend the life span i'll give you a small story and my time will end probably so i'm not going to talk much unless you want me to talk by your questions about health situation what research what is happening in the research and what is happening in health <clears throat> when i landed at usa some 10 years ago at liberty international airport as i was coming out i saw a big holding and he said when this airport was built the life span was 62 years today it is 87 years please insure yourself i went home to my brother's house i saw three big holdings every third child born today will live 100 years please insure yourself insure more i reached washington and the front page news very soon the human life span will be 150 years why seven ways to defy death so my question to medical community with what life span are we going to be happy 150 200 250 300 is an old story of amrut mantan life span is elongated but unfortunately only at one end 
that's my major concern. Quality of life. <laughs> my intention in doing this is to make you think about stigma, which has been put on two words, death and old. Nobody likes to be called old. And no doctor allows you to die peacefully. This is a fact when you go to all this here. And so I think I'm trying to try desperately to change the orientation to give respect and come back to cultural values ancient, which have come after hard life, that conscious acceptance of old age is unconscious acceptance of death as a natural consequence of life. After all, life is sexually transmitted fatal illness. <laughs> so be prepared for it. I don't want to take away from that wonderful thought, but I think, I think I'll steer the conversation uh, a little bit towards public engagement of research and science, what both of us are talking about, and why it is important. That, that and is far more important, I'll tell you why, because I'm also a bit worried our research communities are getting so specialized that the way they do research and talk is best understood only by research community. Then they present their papers in a language which ordinary people don't understand. Then they present it in conferences, publish in journals, which go into cupboards, and only when one wants it for reference, one refers. So the communication between what is important for community, the research is primarily done for improve the quality of life of the community, in every field actually. So if there is no effective communication between the research community and community at large, and there is no other medium like audiovisual medium, which you can use desperately. And that is why I think it's mandatory also to learn this language of image and sound, how it functions, so that we can effectively communicate, particularly in our country, where there's still huge population which can't read and write effectively. And so we can use this medium more positively between the research community and community and one of the main objectives of doing these films is because I show these films and initiate public dialogue about health and the concept. So I think there's no other better medium to make, but while film, what is good about film, what should be a good film is as long as you see it, you don't get time to think. But the moment it finishes, you can't help yourself but think about it. So my idea of a good film is where the screening finishes, thought begins and you can't leave it. You want to discuss it. And the bad film is 15 minutes, half an hour, the film begins, you start thinking of what you have to do after the film. With those simple things, I think we should look at this medium far more effectively as a wonderful adjuvant to research, to public engagement, to self-growth, mm -hmm. and effective communication between two people. Right, so, and we also know that researchers almost always rely on uh, publications uh, in peer-reviewed journals for communicating their science uh, or research. Um, but there are, uh, it's, it's uh, as you know, it's much harder to publish uh, unverified results or, uh, but uh, we have heard from the earlier panel about how uh, researchers are using even even preprints uh, to get that across. That there's a way to publish unsuccessful trials or evaluations now, and so I think public engagement doesn't just end with uh, popular medium like films or uh, a, a news report, but also in uh, 
uh, databases that are publicly available. Uh, and one of the databases that is celebrated across the world in mental health is the Mental Health Innovation Network, especially for researchers who are uh, developing solutions to local problems, and those can be adapted elsewhere as well. So I think that's a takeaway. How do you see the, the community, uh, the acting actors community, uh, grappling with issues of mental health? Do you have a whole lot of issues there? I'm sure you want to mention some of them. It's a very paradoxical situation. See, on one hand, Acting and theater can be therapy to many others, but to the own community, there is a high percentage of psychological morbidity in actors and creative people. And one of the reasons for that is because they become creative because they are abnormal. The perception of things, and scientists also. Because unless you think and perceive things differently. That's another reason why I took psychiatry, because normal people don't interest me at all. They are not interesting at all. I get along better with those who are little not normal. So the idea is not to necessarily treat them, but is to protect them from so-called normal people. Actually, one of the major problems in psychiatry, people think he's a doctor of mad. Actually, we are not. The mad persons don't need doctor. They have already found a solution. <laughs> it's their relatives and other people who bring these people. And they wait so long that the other person has to be brought, tied by five, six people. And they bring him to you and say, please, treat him and say, what happened? And as you take the history, you know that they have been so tolerant. They have noticed something is wrong, but they wouldn't bring him. And then you ask them, why did you bring him today? They say, oh, now we can't manage him. So, so I said, okay, then treat him so that we feel better. I said, if you want to feel better, I will treat you. <laughs> Why should I treat him? This is an important part of communication. Go, mad people. We are on the same scale. Thresholds are different, some people. And high respect for scientists and artists because I am closer to them and my job is to protect you people. I'm trying to do it as far as possible. And uh, informal education, if we don't now pay attention to EQ, which is being talked about a lot now, but uh, still there are no active steps taken out, especially in IT sector, in scientific sector, students with very high IQ in medical school are facing a lot of problems of mental health. Because the major problem in mental health are minor problems, like anxieties, depression, transient situational problems, matters of relationship and everything. What is portrayed in the popular film is not even 1% of the mental health problem. And the idea is to take it across the public to film media is that. And that is why this film about depression. Because many times you don't even know that people. You don't know, even other people don't know that you are depressed and you are anxious. Uh, because there is no awareness about how to identify it, how to know it within yourself. Astu, when I was shown, it was invited to many festivals. It was invited to major universities in India as well as abroad, from Nimans to Harvard University. What was surprising is even educated people came and talked to Sumitra and me, saying, we wish we had seen this film earlier. 
we would have behaved differently with our elders. This is the status of average health education in the country. So I don't think there is a better tool than this tool if we know exactly how to use it. It's a double-edged weapon. So it's like a knife, which in itself is not bad. You can stab a person, or you can cut an apple, or you can do a surgery. The idea is the attitude behind, mind behind, and if that we can affect, and this is the only medium to affect that, because it's through senses, not sensibly. I think uh, uh, for it's true for most professions today, um, journalism being one of them, where um, one would most people would argue that um, it's uh, a debilitating profession if the mental health issues are concerned. Um, we have really cranky newsrooms, and uh, people suffer from a lot of issues in those newsrooms. It's just very recently we've started acknowledging the fact that post traumatic stress disorder is actually a thing in mm, the profession and the fact that it needs to be addressed and um, suddenly in India I don't see um, most editorial policy aligned towards how we can um, we can address this issue among journalists uh, who face such uh, you know traumatic experiences throughout their professional lives they go out and cover wars, they go, go out and cover climate, uh, you know, a uh, lot, of, lot of things that could uh, be uh, affecting their mental health uh, on a daily basis. And so I think there is need, of course, f for guidelines. And we have all heard about the uh, case of women in journalism recently uh, with the Me Too uh, thing. Where, where there's an additional burden on women journalists who um, have to face that kind of harassment as well. So, so work-related harassment in the profession where, uh, from where I come from is, uh, and, and um, mental health issues are immense. Um, I think we'll, we'll, in the interest of time, we'll just quickly see the film. Um, and it, how many, it's five minutes? Okay. Uh, we can see a couple of minutes and uh, we'll open the floor for questions after that. I'm going to show you a 12 minute piece. Thank you. Uh, because I can't show my feature film. The feature film is to us. You know. No, it's another interesting thing you know, why you make feature films and why you make short films also. It's because you can teach the same subject in primary school, middle school, high school and you can take it for PhD also. So each time language of communication changes depending on your growth. Right? So, we so the primary I've chosen a four minute film and it can be used in different circumstances. I can tell you which circumstances. Let's see the film first. And then. Film should be seen like a film. It's not Indian, but good. Είναι αυτό. Ένα σφουργίδι. Τι είναι αυτό. 
Μόλις τώρα στο παπατέρα, σπουργή τι είναι. Τι είναι αυτό. Ένα σπουργίτι είναι πατέρα. Ένα σπουργίτι. Σπου. Γι. Τι. Τι είναι αυτό. Γιατί το κάνεις αυτό το πράγμα μπορείς να μου πεις τόσες φορές σου είπα είναι ένα σπουργίτι. Δεν το καταλαβαίνεις. Πού πας. Δυνατά. Σήμερα ο μικρός μου γιος που πριν λίγες μέρες έκλεισε τα τρία καθόταν μαζί μου έξω στο πάρκο όταν ένα σπουργίτη ήρθε και κάθεσε απέναντί μας. Ο γιος μου με ρώτησε 21 φορές τι ήταν αυτό και το απάντησα και τις 21 φορές ότι ήταν ένα σπουργίτη. Τον αγκάλιασα τρυφερά και τις 21 φορές που μου έκανε την ίδια ερώτηση ξανά και ξανά χωρίς να εκνευριστώ νιώθοντας στοργή για το οθό μου αγοράκι. or for dementia with caregivers is made very good. But the good thing about audiovisual, and many times you don't notice it, if you notice this film, when film begins, it begins with stones, an iron door, and everything rough in life, and it ends all green with the reason. So how images are used also become that. So many times in films, actually, you should take out a clip and see how they affect you. All the educated people also worried about ad films because in half a minute, they can influence children and women to purchase things which they don't need. <laughs> That's the effectiveness of this medium. So. I'm glad I'm happy to show. Yeah, thanks. That's a great lesson in film appreciation, and we'll certainly uh, dissect our film henceforth, minute by minute, uh, in parts that influenced us. Open for questions. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so actually, um, my question is more towards the message in the last film. Um, I've been a caregiver for Alzheimer's. My grandfather had Alzheimer's. 
And I've, I mean, although I was quite young. So, I mean, um, it affects the caregiver person as well. And I've seen my grandmother go through it. How, how do you, I mean, do you look at the mental health of the caregiver as well? Because it's very difficult for the caregiver to see somebody and be able to orient. I know that you feel that it is, I mean, not every relative understands, that's true. But, I mean, when your loved one suffers, or you think they are suffering, maybe they are not actually. So the caregiver who sees reality in a different way suffers quite a bit. How, mm, I mean, I guess, how, how, do you, how do you help or how do you assess that? Or what can be there for them? Just to add to that, I think we had a great commercially successful film in Piku where uh, this aspect of caregiving was also uh, highlighted very well, so yeah. Astu also, you can go on Amazon Prime. I don't know if you've seen it. But if you could get to, that's something which I couldn't show. Yeah, I just looked it so up. That exactly <laughs> deals from multifaceted angle, the caregiver problem and the patient problem and what is acceptance and what is question. The point which I was trying to make that how, because they're just juxtaposed to women one so-called uneducated. And he comes, when he arrives that demented person there, from the talk, she, she doesn't like it at all because she has so many mouths to feed and one more mouth. So she says, why did you bring him here? Better give it to the police. Right? But from his way, she thinks, oh my God, he's an educated man. And probably he may be God. But the next moment she realizes he may be God, but he's behaving as a child. But it poses no problem for her to give him the respect to be like you give to your parents, but treat him like a child in the same time. This problem comes to a person who thinks a lot, not sensitive enough. Right. So, because you do the same thing for children, you don't get mad. With the old people, you get mad. But there, it is instead of telling, through various situations, you come to know what is the situation of a caregiver and what best can be done. Do you think a lot? <laughs> anyway, for those interested, you can go on Amazon Prime and look for So Be It. Astu is the name of the film. Archita. Uh, my question is about uh, EQ and IQ that you mentioned earlier. Uh, now, uh, as you mentioned, like 300 years of print media helped develop IQ quite a lot. In contrast, today we have uh, abundant of um, uh, audiovisual content. In fact, so. Uh, how do you control, and uh, once you have an abundance of audiovisual content, people tend to get addicted to it and ignore the IQ part. So how do you control the quality and quantity of audiovisual content so that uh, the IQ part is not ignored? The whole idea of control is bad, first of all. I think it's a Charlie Chaplin who said, you need power only when you want to do something bad. Otherwise, most of the things can be done with love. Yes. Here, the education is the only way. I'll tell you why. And your problem is very genuine, which all of us see. Because today, what has happened is, because of the possibility to expand virtual space and virtual time, there is a complete discordant. You, you are together in the same space and time, but you are not in the same space and time, unlike earlier times. So this is a problem. But the mo if you try to control it, it will bounce back. The other way is flooding. Let them do, instead do it more and more till they realize themselves. And also because if you don't know what is used, again, as I said, uh, 
We are not using, very soon there will be early dementia cases because we are not relying on our own memory. We have outsourced our memory to our mobile, which is a fact. You go anywhere, anything. <laughs> Any place you go, people are moving with camera and taking photographs all the time. So you are not using your memory at all, using this. But this has to be told, depending on the age again, and the facility. Right at the beginning, till it is novel, you can't do anything. But once the novelty is over, then there are very things can be done. I think one more thing that you or could probably... If scientists say, we may be evolving into a new species, which is very, which is quite possible, because we don't need, we are human beings, we are becoming ancient and outdated. Probably we are evolving into new species where we don't need all the things which your earlier things. New species with selfitis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, to her question, uh, you, were, you were referring earlier to nutrition. Uh, which is uh, by which I think you meant quality over quantity. I refer to my quantity. film as nutritious films uh, than the junk food. I mean to nutritious films so you can tell there are good things also with that. There are many good things. Like yesterday's presentation was how you can monitor medication or treatment monitor that. So using it for a proper cause See, even in schools and there, they teach you to read and write. But what to read and write is your choice. No? <coughs> and that brings us into a very different area, which we can't discuss now, has to do with value education. Sanskrit. And that is very important because what has changed, <coughs> earlier we didn't go to school till six years. Oh, that's the early part of, it's called formative years. Formative years, we played games. All those games promote sensory development. Today, we spend 25,000 rupees and put our name into sensory awareness workshop after growing up, which was earlier free without going to school. Because in any way, in human beings, intelligence is the last thing to develop. Verbal, cognitive intelligence. Ah, the sensitivity develops first, actually. So, if you just uh, indirectly guide them, not ordering them, show them some interesting things which can be done with mobiles or audiovisual. A lot of good young people are doing mobile films, one minute, two minute film. So, if you tell them, encourage them to give them an exercise to make a film, probably that's a good way of channelizing. I think with that brilliant life lesson, we'll wrap this session up. And I'll let Dr. Agashi lose into the audience for more questions and answers. Uh, Madan is looking at me from the corner of his eyes. Thank you, Dr. Agashi. Let's give him a innovation. Thank you. <laughs>